Welcome to Module 8 of the ASTM 1527 online course. This module is focused on data gaps. A data gap is defined in EPA's All Appropriate Inquiry Regulation and mirrored in the ASTM 1527 standard as a lack of or inability to obtain information required by this standard despite good faith efforts on the part of the environmental professional. Now, keeping in mind that a good faith effort means you really have to try, whereas ASTM defines it an honest and sincere intention to fulfill one's obligation. Data gaps can result from incompleteness in any of the activities required by this practice, whether it's the site visit, interviews or historical research and we'll be looking at examples where data gaps come into play in each of these components of the phase one process. Data gaps typically arise from three conditions limitations, deviations, or data failure and we'll talk about each of these in detail. Now these may be known prior to the beginning of the phase one for example a client imposed constraint or they may be encountered while performing the activities required by the standard, for example, limitations encountered during the site visit. The ASTM standard requires a discussion of limitations, deviations, and data failure in the report, and examples of each of these are scattered throughout the ASTM standard. For example, in section 9.2.4, physical limitations are described such as adjacent buildings, bodies of water, asphalt or other paved areas, and limiting conditions such as snow or rain. Typically, a limitation is a condition that's imposed on or beyond the environmental professional's control. So let's look at a few physical limitations that an environmental professional might encounter during a site visit. Here we have visual limitations due to the presence of high grasses. The environmental professional could easily miss drums, containers, surface evidence of buried waste, or this ditch. Property transactions take place all through the year and waiting for spring is usually not an option. Here we have two properties, both covered with snow and appearing somewhat similar. One photograph was taken on what has historically been used as a hayfield. Another was part of a major steel mill operation that had been demolished within the last few years. In one case, the snow cover may not be a significant detriment to forming reasonable opinions about the potential for recognized environmental conditions. In another, it may be a critical missing piece. Here we have a situation with a, an uncooperative owner and permission to access the property has not been granted. Now stepping onto any property without authorization is generally not a good idea, but in this case it seems it would be a particularly bad idea. Visual observations from the property boundaries will just have to be good enough. Here are some other examples of limitations that are often encountered in the Phase 1 process. Arguably, one of the most common limitations is the inability to research a property's historical use back to 1940s or first developed use, whichever is earlier. Consider how challenging this would be for an area that's been developed since all oh, the 1700s. Or all or part of a building on the property is locked and inaccessible during a site visit. Or perhaps there's an inability to interview the key site manager. Or maybe a release has previously been reported for the property and agency file records won't be available until well past the report's due date. Perhaps a client has requested that tenants not be interviewed due to the need for confidentiality. Or perhaps the client requires a one-week turnaround for the assessment, which might just have a slight bearing on the time needed to compile sufficient information. Whatever the limitation, the environmental professional must document this in the report. Now deviations are different. A deviation is something that the environmental professional elects to do differently from what the standard requires. An example might include modifying the ASTM specified search distance for, say, leaking underground storage tank sites for a property that's located in a downtown area 
there are plenty of reported releases and site investigations within just a couple of city blocks, and information gleaned from these nearby releases may be sufficient for an environmental professional to evaluate the potential for impacts from leaking underground storage tank sites to the target property without the need for additional review of a site nearly half a mile away. Perhaps limiting interviews of tenants of a relatively new shopping center. Recall that from the interviews module that when there are five or fewer tenants, the ASTM standard requires that all tenants must be interviewed. But if the property is a relatively recently constructed shopping center or city directories and rent rolls identify only restaurants and retail stores, well, the environmental professional may elect to deviate from this requirement. Deviations are subject to the environmental professional's judgment, and the EP must describe deviations in the report and state the rationale for the deviation. An environmental professional may need to deviate from the standard because of a limitation that's imposed by the client, but if the EP chooses to deviate from the standard, that deviation should never result in a data gap. If data would have been available, if not for the deviation, then the deviation was not appropriate. Data failure is specific to the historical research and was discussed in detail in a prior module. We previously discussed how data failure means a failure to achieve the historical research objectives subject to the rules of reasonably ascertainable and practically reviewable. So let's revisit some of the key points of data failure. Recall that data failure occurs when all of the standard historical sources that are reasonably ascertainable and likely to be useful have been reviewed, but the research objectives have still not been met. And recall that if data failure is encountered, the report shall document the data failure, and also give reasons why any of the standard historical sources may have been excluded. And finally, recall from the prior module that if the data failure represents a significant data gap, then the report must comment on the impact of the data gap on the ability of the environmental professional to identify recognized environmental conditions. And we'll discuss this concept in more detail on a later slide. Which brings us to the discussion of significant data gaps. There's a reasonable argument that there are data gaps in virtually every Phase I environmental site assessment that's conducted. There just isn't enough time or money to operate in a world of perfect information. And the assessment activities are also subject to the laws of diminishing returns. One of the principles that's found in the ASTM standard tells us that all appropriate inquiry does not mean an exhaustive assessment of a clean property that there's a point at which the cost of information obtained, or the time required to gather it, outweighs the usefulness of the information and, in fact, can be a material detriment to the orderly completion of the transaction. So the question is whether a data gap is significant. And a data gap, on its own, is not inherently significant. The ASTM standard provides an example that if a property's historical use is not identified back to 1940, but the earliest source shows that the property was undeveloped, well, this data gap by itself would not necessarily be significant. A data gap is only significant if other information and or professional experience raises reasonable concerns involving the data gap. For example, if a building on a property is inaccessible during the site visit and the environmental professional's experience indicates that the type of activities that have been identified at that building lead to recognized environmental conditions, then the inability to inspect the building would be a significant data gap warranting comment. Let me share a real world example where this concept of data gap versus significant data gap came into play. A foreclosure was underway for three commercial properties. All three properties were owned by the same individual who had purchased these properties within the last three to four years. All three buildings had been abandoned, but were secure. The property owner would not return phone calls, and no access was provided to the building interior for any of the site reconnaissance. <laughs> 